So, good afternoon and welcome to uh, ComQuest Conversations. I'm Keith Hohalter, President and CEO of ComQuest Services. And today with me is Michelle Heverling. Um, Michelle is uh, Vice President of Integrated Behavioral Health Services. And as we've done in a lot of our conversations, um, we're going to talk about some of the services that, that ComQuest provides. And today in particular, we're going to talk about the mental health services um, that are provided. So, Michelle, these are really, really challenging times. This, this COVID stuff has just been crushing on people's lives. And I wonder if you might be able to share a little bit about the impact on people's mental health and on our delivery of services, please. Absolutely. So there's a number of studies actually that are happening right now about the impact of COVID and the isolation uh, and, and being shut in their homes for weeks and weeks and weeks on end and its impact on people's mental health. So some of the newest research is really saying 45%, if not higher, 45% uh, of Americans are saying that COVID had a significant impact wow. on their mental health. Uh, so it's not a, a small thing. It's impacted a lot of people. And for those that were already struggling with mental health issues, anxiety and depression, it had an even greater impact. Yeah. Um, some of the pieces that go along with this is really the anxiety, fear, sadness, the social isolation, and even some guilt and shame, which is an interesting piece that we haven't really talked about because people kind of compare their situations with other people's situations. So I think of even just the folks that have missed graduation or prom or fifth grade graduation or just different pieces like that and things that we don't really talk about related to this, it seems small. And I only bring them up because those folks, when I talk to them, they're really upset because they missed those yeah. things but then they subsequently feel guilty or ashamed because how can I be upset about that when other people have lost their businesses or they've lost their jobs or they've lost family members to the disease? Uh, and so then there's guilt and shame because my situation isn't as bad as other other right. folks. Uh, and it's it's it just compounds on top of itself when these other layers come in. So just that fear of the virus, the sadness related to loss of resources, loss of connection with their family, loss of connection with their um, friends, and just their social support network, which as humans is such sure. a big part of who we are and how we cope with day-to-day -day stressors. So we added a whole lot of stress, a whole lot of fear, and completely limited support systems. Well, and I think also it, 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 it seems like as you're talking about isolation, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're, in, you're in a house with people that those aren't the normal types of conversations you have. You may have those with your friends at work or, or your, your buddies at the gym or places like that. So those outlets that you had are gone. So I'm sure that that, that convergence of, of, of thoughts is really difficult for people. Yes, and I think a forgotten group in all of this too is our kids. So we had parents that were not only being asked to homeschool kids, they were with their children 24 seven while they were also under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I wanted to emphasize in this conversation with you is for our adults and our parents to really make sure that they're taking care of themselves so that they kind of like that oxygen mask on an air when you're on an yeah, airplane. Good example. Make sure you put your oxygen mask on first before you help your kids so that you can be there for them. Mm -hmm. right. And that's one of the things that I continue to recommend for our parents. Even as their kids are maybe going back to camp or going back to daycare, there's a lot of anxiety and fear that comes from that. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. You're doing all those things that we tell people to do all the time, eating right, exercising, mm -hmm. still maintaining connections with your supports um, and, and asking for help when you need it. Um, so I know one of the, the pieces in all of this is just recognizing that there's help out there. There's so many different resources that are being provided to people about uh, mental health help that is out there, recovery resources that are out there. Of course, ComQuest is, is one of those of resources. Um, so I'll kind of segue a little bit into, yeah. into talking about that because I want to reassure anybody that's watching this that ComQuest is open for business, our services are available, and we've adapted to where there's multiple 
ways that people can receive help. Um, for those folks that are afraid of going out of their homes, we can offer telehealth. Um, we still have the option, at least for a few more days, maybe a few more weeks, of phone calls for folks that don't maybe have the even the technology. I know that's been one of the concerns. I don't have a smartphone or ability to do a video. Can I still get help? Yes. Um, luckily, we're in a situation where we're still able to do phone calls with people, um, so we still can connect with them. So I encourage everybody to reach out. Um, to call our organization um, to do their intake. So basically what that would look like if someone wanted to get some help yeah. for themselves uh, or for one of their children or a loved one. Um, if it's an adult, the adult themselves does have to call or at least be present as part of the conversation uh, with our intake staff, but they can just call our main number, uh, the 330-455-0374 number. Um, they're gonna get our intake uh, specialist. One of our intake specialists is going to ask them some questions about their insurance, their address, their demographic. Just gather that basic information, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Um, after that, they can and they can choose. What's really nice right now is they can choose if they want to come in. We are doing face-to-face -face sessions, mm -hmm. so we have the majority actually of our counselors are back on site. Our prescribers are on site. That if someone wants to be seen face-to-face -face with their counselor, they can do that. Um, same process. Just call our our number, our intake staff. Um, they'll do an enrollment. We either do those over the phone now for someone that wants to do telehealth, or we do the enrollment face-to-face -face when mm -hmm. they come in for their counseling appointment, their first assessment. Um, if they're doing telehealth, so telehealth, basically what that is, our preferred way of doing that mm -hmm. is with video conferencing. Mm -hmm. So people have heard of Skype or FaceTime or things. So we have a platform that we use um, as you know, that, that we are using with our counselors so that they can connect with our clients uh, video conferencing. Right. So you're seeing them, you're talking to them, um, just like you would on Skype or FaceTime or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we can do the assessments that way. We can even do ongoing clinical sessions that way and then make referrals to any other services that people might sure. need. And if, and if their first if their first appointment was a was a face-to-face -face appointment and mm -hmm. they decided that after that, hey, you know what, I think I'd like to try this video counseling thing, they can they can transition back and forth to, to those as well based upon what their what their ability to get here is also, right? Absolutely. And I think we're going to continue to have those services mm -hmm. ongoing. We've had some folks that really liked it, that mm -hmm. really enjoyed that, not having to go out of their house. Right. They could connect with their counselor really quickly. Uh, so I'm excited that I think we're going to have those those telehealth sessions available ongoing, and it looks like the funders are going to pay for them. Well, and I was talking to a couple of our school-based folks, and, and their best time to connect with, with some of the kids was like from 9 till 11 o'clock at night because yeah. it was pre-fortnight time. <laughs> um, but it was it was also kids that, you know, they may not have access to, to a phone or anything during the day, mm -hmm. but from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, they, they have access because their parents are home or whatever that case may be. So I think that, you know, the easier that we can make it for folks, which it sounds like what we're doing, the better off we are. Absolutely, and I'm glad you mentioned the school-based team. So yeah. our school-based team is working, we've got more of our school-based counselors working during the summer in case managers than we ever had in the past. So uh, if kids were in services during the school year, um, they're gonna be able to continue those services over the summer and even nicer be able to choose if they wanna come in and see their counselor face-to-face -face in one of our outpatient offices mm -hmm. um, or if they wanna do telehealth with their, their counselor. So um, we're going to be able to make sure that our kids and our families are taking care of all the way up through when school starts again, whatever that might look well, like. And, that's, and when they get ready to go back to school, that's going to be a time where, where really there's going to be a lot of transition taking yes. place. A lot. So, okay. so you know, one of the I, as we've been going through some of these series, one of the things that I think is, is important is making sure that people understand when we talk about people coming for mental health services, what's that mean? Mental health can be everything from, I think, some, well, I think sometimes when folks think about mental health, they think about um, kind of the deep end mental health mm -hmm. concerns, schizophrenia, psychosis, bipolar disorder, depression, um, things like that. And those are certainly a significant part of what we do and a significant um, area that we, that we work with. But mental health can be um, just getting some assistance with 
um, learning some skills to deal with the stressors that we're faced with every day. We're seeing folks that have never sought out mental health treatments before um, as a result of COVID, as a result of the isolation and some of the other things that are going on right now, needing that additional support. Um, so it's often focused on um, kind of normalizing what folks are experiencing, um, giving them a safe space to come in and talk about what's happening with them, with their lives, with their families, um, and really giving them some resources and skills that they can use, that they can use immediately. They can go home and practice that night. Um, many of our counselors use homework of some type or another with different skill sets to try um, to help with sadness, to help with depression, anxiety, um, trauma. Uh, so there are many that talk about COVID being a traumatic experience sure. and some of the loss that's happened with mm -hmm. unemployment and loss of loved ones and not being able to, um, I think of folks that maybe have lost a loved one that weren't able to have a funeral right. or weren't ever, weren't able to tap into our sort of natural processes that we uh, usually turn to as humans and we haven't been able to do that. Right. And that can be sad and anxiety provoking. And so um, mental health can just be um, short term so we have some folks that come in, they do a couple of sessions, two, three sessions, they get the skills they need, they practice it, they experience that relief, um, and they move on. For other folks, they're, um, they're not only helped by talk therapy and working with a counselor, uh, but maybe they also need some medication, mm -hmm. maybe some, you know, an antidepressant or something to help with their depression or to help um, just take the edge off. That's often the way I talk about medication mm -hmm. is it's something to help take the edge off for those mm -hmm. folks that need it on a temporary basis sure. so that it gives those skills that they're learning time to take root and grow mm -hmm. with a little bit calmer soil. Um, and, then, and then at that point, a lot of folks, they taper off of the medication. So sure. they don't need it for, I think sometimes people think, oh, I need to be on medication for the rest of my life and I don't want to do that. And that is not that's not the case. Right. Now, for some folks, it is. Some of our folks struggling with um, some of the more significant diagnoses, again, schizophrenia, bipolar, mm -hmm. things like that, yeah. they may need medication for the rest of their life, but they can live a great life on stabilized medications. Sure. And just like you would with diabetes or some of the high blood pressure, some of those things right. that folks are used to taking medication for to live their, their best life, same thing can be true for mental health. And they can receive those services at, at, at our Alliance, our, our, our Canton, and our Maslin offices, correct? Yes, and okay. Carrollton and, and Minerva Carrollton as well. Minerva, yep. Mm -hmm. yep, awesome. You, and, and, I, and I know we didn't really uh, talk about this much, but you know, how might our ability to, to be available at different times help people that are first responders? You know, I think of my, my son who's a nurse, and, and, you know, I often wonder, are you, is he getting help somewhere? Because he probably would never tell me. Um, but, like, people that are paramedics, people that are, that are doctors, nurses, um, any of those that are, that are first responders, how might the, the, the advantages of, of, of the telehealth help them? Because I'm sitting here thinking that, gosh, we're missing out on maybe some opportunities to reach out to those folks as well. Yeah, so I think it allows our services to be where they are when they need it. Uh, so we do have some evening hours and you don't have that drive time, you don't have to drive to downtown Can, you don't have to drive to you know Alliance or one of our outpatient mm -hmm. sites. Um, we can just call you up put you up on the video screen, you've got that immediate connection. Um, and to your point, a lot of those folks are dealing with incredibly high anxiety and stress and trauma from what they've seen and what they've been through and just that that chronic stress that they've right. been dealing with for the last few months and continue to uh, to struggle with some as we as we think about where this is going to go. You know, it, it's not entirely over yet and we don't know what it's gonna look right. like. Right, and I think some of those folks that, that have been you know, struggling with some of the some of the, the the mild mental health issues, and you know, find themselves drinking a little bit more than what they had, and things like that. I think the benefit of the agency is the ability to deal with the co-occurring disorders yes. as well. Yes, I think that's one I always talk about. The greatest thing about ComQuest is we have the broadest array of services of any organization in the county that we work with little kids all the way through the geriatric yeah. population. Yep. And we do recovery services and mental health services integrated. So no matter what door you come through, you're going to get that full assessment and an assessment of all of your needs. And if there's 
a way we can assist you, we can't provide housing, but if we can, can help help connect you to resources, yep. if we can help connect you with our supported employment program that can help connect you with a job. We have so many folks out there who are now unemployed that maybe their employer went away, that, that business went away, sure. that have uh, a mental health challenge or recovery challenge that also needs employment as part of their recovery and part of mm -hmm. their life. We can help with that. Um, if you've got somebody that's got some deeper end um, intensive concerns and problems, we have our intensive home-based treatment program. We have so many different services that we can connect people to. Um, ComQuest is just incredibly robust. If you've got any kind of need that involves any kind of mental health, recovery, some combination thereof, because we know the majority of the time, yep. uh, one or the other, they go hand in hand, mm -hmm. and we can connect you to the right services, we can provide you with the right services, and we're much more um, prepared to meet the need of folks that are coming in with complex needs. Sure, sure. Anything else you'd like to add today? I'm just glad we're able to have this conversation <laughs> right. and able to really, sure. I think the biggest thing I wanna get out there is not only that um, we're still here, we're still ready to help you. Um, our, our counselors are back in the office. They are chomping at the bit to see folks. Our prescribers have been in the office this entire time. Yeah, they, have. Um, they have not been doing working from home, they, which is, there's no problem with that, but they yeah. have been in the office seeing clients that needed their medications, needed their injections. Um, our school-based team is there. They're gonna be there for you during the summer. Um, just what I want people to know is we're here for you. Um,